short break. So TV1 is a rock sample that's representative of the rock size study. And I did some field work in the course changes. The questions I try to answer um, uh, by looking at those rocks and studying are, where are they found now? And where <clears throat> were they emplaced originally? Because they're in a very different place than the place where they were actually uh, originated. Also, where, where were they generated? Meaning, like, where do they come from? And how old are they? And uh, the most interesting question for me was that travel from the place where they were born to the place we find them today. And that's kind of like my heroic journey. So how do we know all this? It's uh, for field relationships by looking at the rocks and the whole area. Um, geochemistry and petrology and uh, reconstruction of tectonic plate movement. So who, does, who knows uh, what a subduction zone is? That's cool. So uh, one, <coughs> we're basically living on one, and sometimes it rumbles, so we kind of hope it's not coming too soon. How is it working? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So a, a quick recap of a subduction zone, um, which has a lot to do with <coughs> the rocks I studied. I'll find my pointer here. It's basically con a convergence of two plates. One is an oceanic plate that dips down beneath uh, an uh, continental plate. On its way down, it uh, creates a uh, accretionary prism where sediments that get scraped off the oceanic crust kind of get stacked up right here. A four arc basin, and in, in, in the case of our Cascadia subduction zone, that is the Willamette Valley and the Puget Sound Valley, and then a volcanic arc that is our Cascades Mountains, like Mount Rainier, Mount Baker. As the plate, uh, the oceanic plate goes down, it sweats out some water, and that water uh, intrudes into the overlying mantle wedge and causes melting of the rocks there, partial melting, and it creates volcanism. So this is an overview over the whole west coast. You can see the Cascadia subduction zone in uh, pale red. The location of the rocks I studied gives you an, uh, uh, an impression of the San Andreas Fault that goes from the uh, Gulf uh, Baja California up to the Mendocino uh, Triple Junction. And then this little remnant of a plate, it's called the Juan de Fuca plate, uh, is still actively being subducted today right here. That's what happened along the whole coast of California and Mexico uh, some million years ago. So this is Leech Lake that gave Leech Lake Mountain its name. <coughs> and this is Leech Lake Mountain. It's a beautiful area. The, it's probably hard to see. I wonder if you can turn the light. No, it's over here. I get it. Oh. So what you can see is right at the top of Leech Lake Mountain are the rocks I studied as dark bands uh, in between like layers of white sediments. And I put some arrows there so you can see they're pointing right into those rocks. I shaded them a little bit so you can see them even better. Those are basaltic rocks that intruded into layers of open ocean sediments, uh, the, the white lines here. and. Uh, trench sediments, basically sandstones, which tells us that they're intruding uh, in, a, in a setting that's near a, a trench, uh, right in front of an accretionary prism. So to the question of uh, where those rocks were generated and how old they are, I use geochemistry. And in geochemistry, you can use trace elements, kind of like a, a fingerprint, to uh, tell you about the uh, qualities of, uh, of those rocks. Uh, you can see there's one fingerprint, it's called a mid-ocean basalt uh, fingerprint, and then uh, this line here, the white lines here, those are ocean island basalt fingerprints. And my samples in red, they fall right nicely in line with those ocean island basalts. Uh, this plot, especially the, the lower part of the line here, uh, tells me something about 
at what depth those rocks were melted. Um, <coughs> uh, going by this, uh, it, uh, they were created at about 50 miles depth through like very small amounts of partial melting. That melt percolated up into the crust and then intruded into the sediments on top of the oceanic plate. I would have also did isotopic dating and came to an age of 119 million years, which is about the early Cretaceous period. And this is probably a little confusing plot. The interesting thing about this is I found in those rock samples not only the uh, minerals uh, of the igneous rock, that means the, or the volcanic rock, I also find, found a mineral overprint of metamorphic rocks and that overprint tells me about the pressures and temperatures that that rock had been exposed to after it was emplaced in an entrenched setting. And so we can create on, on a diagram of temperature and pressure, we can create a, a time path that tells me a little bit about that journey that those rocks took after they were emplaced. So we'll start out at 190 million years, those rocks were created, intruded into sediments. Then <clears throat> over about three to four million years, they uh, went, uh, were exposed to very high pressures, about eight kilobars, which uh, Equal, is equal to a burial depth of about 20, uh, 20 miles of depth. Uh, other scientists have determined an age of that metamorphism as about 160 million years. That means within 3 million years, those rocks went way down into the, the mantle and then found their way without being altered to come back up. In a in, in period of about 50 million years, they came back up uh, to the surface, and we can find them on top of a mountain today. <clears throat> so taking all that information, we can come up with a cartoon of what happened with those rocks in terms of uh, the subduction zone. So this is the downgoing oceanic crust. This is the continental crust. And here's our Forward basin, and this is the accretionary wedge that I talked about in the subduction zone. About 160 to 120 million years ago, those uh, sediments in yellow here, well, that's uh, the terrain that the rocks I studied are in, uh, went down from where it was created about here in towards the mantle, and got exposed to high pressures and fairly moderate temperatures, but it didn't rest there. Through the continued subduction, basically, new sediments got accreted and they started pushing up the original sequence here. So this, the, over the millions of years, those rocks started lifting up again. That was not quite enough to bring them all the way up to the surface. So geologists came up with kind of a very elegant solution of claiming that there is a big back thrust that basically uh, truncated this kind of neatly stacked sequence and pushed it over uh, younger sediments, which you can see right here. That sequence. So that is the heroic journey of my rocks. And just to re recap, they intruded into a step of deep sea and trench sediments, were dragged down 60 miles uh, at depth in a fairly short amount of time, which uh, shows that it was very rapid subduction, came back up through underplating, basically, and back thrusting, and finally got exposed to the open air, probably a couple of million years ago. I thought that was a pretty um, amazing journey, and it was a lot of fun to work on this project. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.